Hey guys, welcome to Skill Link. How easy is it to make a call today? You just have to think that you need to talk to somebody and then you immediately call up your friend and given that he or she answers your call, you can immediately talk to them. While all this information travels in no time, there may be situations in which information may be lost through the channel. Identifying these probable losses are important so that they can be minimized and the flow of communication occurs with minimum losses. Telephone signals, internet communication signals, and cable television signals all use optical fibers to transmit information from one place to another. These optical fibers tend to have some irregularities which create loss in the information signal. These losses are divided majorly into five types and there are subdivisions to each type which will be discussed as we learn more about it. Before we discuss the type of losses, we need to know how we determine the losses. Now suppose you are saying something at one end of the phone and the other person is not able to hear you clearly. This shows that some signal is getting lost in the way. This loss of signal in the optical fibers is termed as attenuation. Attenuation is measured with the help of a formula which is given as the ratio of input optical power to output optical power over the length of the fiber L. Its unit is decibel per kilometer. Attenuation or loss in signal strength is caused in the fiber due to absorption losses, scattering losses, dispersion losses, radiative losses and coupling losses. In this video, we will be discussing absorption losses and scattering losses. First, we'll talk about absorption losses. An optical fiber is made up of either glass or plastic material. During fabrication of the fiber, there might be some impurities present in the fiber that can cause loss in the signal. This loss is called absorption loss. Here, the signal is absorbed and converted into other forms such as heat. The amount of loss that the signal incurs due to absorption losses depends upon the concentration of impurities present in the fiber. Absorption losses are further classified into intrinsic absorption losses and extrinsic absorption losses. Let's first discuss intrinsic absorption. In the optical fiber, the light carrying particles are called photons. These photons, when interacting with the electrons that are present inside the fiber, are absorbed by the electron and raise them to a higher energy level. This results in a loss of light signal and is called intrinsic absorption. The next type of absorption loss is the extrinsic losses. While intrinsic absorption is caused by the metals that are fused with silica to make the fiber, extrinsic absorption is caused by the impurities present in silica. These include metals like iron, copper, cobalt, nickel, manganese and chromium. They tend to absorb the optical signals. This is why their impurity concentration is kept less than 1% to achieve a loss level below 1 decibel per kilometer. And sometimes there might be some hydroxyl ions or to say water vapors present inside the cable fibers which might have remained during manufacturing. This also causes a significant loss in the optical signal. After absorption loss, we have scattering loss. Scattering loss scatters the signal inside the optic cable. Scattering loss is further divided into linear scattering and non-linear scattering. We know that inside an optical fiber, there are different modes that carry signals. A condition in which a mode carrying an optical signal is scattered onto a different mode is termed as linear scattering. Linear scattering has two major divisions, Rayleigh scattering and Mi scattering. In Rayleigh scattering, the atoms inside the fiber absorb the light and then scatter it in a different direction. Although this appears like absorption loss, but here the light is scattered back and this makes it different from absorption loss. Here's a fun fact. The scattering of the blue light in the atmosphere is also caused by Rayleigh scattering. Next, under linear scattering, we have Mi scatterings. They are caused by particles that are of the size of the wavelength of the scattered light. The optical signal when it hits these particles result in the scattering of light in the forward direction and is termed as Mi scattering. 
Now, coming to non-linear scattering, the optical power is transferred from one mode to another, either in the same frequency or different frequency. The direction of scattering can be forward or backward. Non-linear scattering is further divided into stimulated Brillen scattering and stimulated Raman scattering. In stimulated Brillen scattering, the strong optical signals inside the fiber are converted into acoustic signals. These signals travel backward and interfere with the incoming optical signals, causing a loss in signal strength. In the second type of non-linear scattering, that is stimulated Raman scattering, the signal that has a shorter wavelength transfers its energy to the signal with the longer wavelength. This transfer of energy between the signals results in limiting the performance of the signal. Well, that's all about absorption losses and scattering losses. In the next video on fiber optics, we'll be discussing dispersion losses, radiative losses and coupling losses. Until then, bye!